right, Jay Firestone, Dark Matter on Sci-Fi Channel, Friday nights at 10. Which I love. Congratulations on season two. And is there going to be a season three? Well, I have a meeting with the network on Friday to talk about the creative direction of season three, so we'll see. <laughs> I have to say I love Dark Matter. I like the fact that it's not only diverse, but the characters are so distinct and it's women, it's people of color. How did you come up with the concept? Oh, I didn't. I mean, I have to tell you that I had a meeting with Sci-Fi Channel after Lost Girl was coming to an end, and we decided we'd like to do another show together, and I had a comic book on my desk at the office, and it was Dark Matter, and I flipped through it really quickly, and I said, this is cool, <laughs> right? And uh, I bought the comic book, I sold it to Sci-Fi Channel, and then I hired Joe and Paul to write the show for me, and we made one rule, which I guess you'll like, is that every character in the comic book could be a guy or a girl. So we didn't necessarily stick to what was in the comic book. So we, uh, we auditioned uh, a female actor and a male actor for all the parts. The android originally was a male, and we made it a female, right? And uh, we tweaked the comic book to give slightly different uh, uh, elements to each character, but you will like, I guess, and I think people should understand that we were open to whatever was the best actor for the part, male or female. That's one of the things that I love about you. Your shows are always so different looking than a lot of the others. It's not cookie cutter, and the characters are always well defined. How do you uh, sort of figure out going from cop show to sci-fi? What draws you to a new show or story idea? Oh, well, listen, uh, one thing I do, uh, everybody's commented about this, is I'm about character. I'm always about character, okay? If they're just boring people, I have no interest in it. Uh, if they're cookie-cutter people, no interest in it. The cop shows, I'm developing two different cop shows right now, and one is about, let's say, a woman betrayed who you would think would fall because of the betrayal of the man, but no, what she does is she comes back full force, very hard, and she takes control of the situation. So that to me was a cool character. I've got another uh, cop show I'm developing about somebody who was betrayed and sold out and could have just stopped, but decides to fight back too. So I like strong characters, I always do. They're much more fun to write, very complex ones. You do like strong characters. I grew up, well I didn't grow up because I'm not that young, but I love Lost Girl. I love the characters in it. I love the fact that you seem to really work and nurture the people you work with. It sounds like they go to other shows all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Everybody that ever worked for me uh, pretty much throughout my career has been people who are on their way up. You know, uh, a lot of the writers I worked with on the original Nikita went on to do 24 and CSI. Uh, Lost Girl characters all have new shows now, Lost Girl writers. So, you know, there's a, a showrunner, which is somebody who takes care of every part of the show, casting, uh, production, and the creative and the scripts. And there aren't a lot of very experienced showrunners, so I like getting people who are on their way up, working with them, and uh, they learn, I learn. You know, what's life isn't it fun unless we're both learning all the time. Well, I always learn from your shows like, because you seem to make it look so effortless to get a cast, to get a team together. And so working with sci-fi, what is that like? Because I know you worked with other networks, but you've been with sci-fi off and on for a while. Uh, yeah, the sci-fi and I have a great relationship. I mean, right, Paul, um, uh, oh gosh, Tom Vitale, who used to be there and who first bought Lost Girl for me, we played cat and mouse with Lost Girl for over a year. He kept saying, I want the show, I don't want the show, blah, 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 blah. I got an offer from CW, we were in talks with ABC Family, but sci-fi, there was just a connection. So I made a deal with Tom, and now Chris, uh, Regina, who's taken over, uh, Chris and I are doing well. We talk, we gab, we argue about characters and where they go. We jointly agreed who to kill, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we have a lot of fun. It's all this in chemistry with the network is just as important as chemistry between the actors. Now, are you thinking about doing anything with CW? Because I think CW as the pretty network, there's absolutely nobody who's not pretty on this, the network. To yeah, CW. well, I've been in there. I've been in there to talk to them I mean, a couple times. Too, so oh, thank really you, thank you. Guess. I've been in there a couple times to talk to them. I've actually spent the last few months talking to a lot of the networks, even Cinemax, which wants you know, power and action and uh, talk to Sci-Fi, talk to USA Network, talk to a few. And I have a bunch of friends at CW. Uh, but, you know, you're right. I mean, I want to do probably darker stuff right now than CW is doing. Some of the stuff I'm developing a show with Roger Avery, who was one of the Academy Award winners on Pulp Fiction. And we've got a very dark show we're developing, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And I've been in to see all the networks recently. And if I get that off the ground, that's going to be exciting. All I can tell you is it's a show about people who uh, get killed almost every episode. <laughs> <laughs> but for good reason. Let's just say karma comes to get them.
some people do deserve it. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. Now with, I'm going to ask more of a business type question. Okay. So, you know, with all the proliferation of cable networks, streaming, all these different channels, does that affect you as someone who makes shows, packages them and sells them? Oh yeah. It's actually been a big asset to me because, uh, I'm, I'm like an independent. I, I, I don't do business with the studios. Um, I own my shows. I owned Lost Girl Dark Matter, my show before 13. And what's happened is the shared windows that are coming around has really helped. In our case with Dark Matter, without Dark Matter, without Netflix, without all these rights that I can sell differently, uh, the show never would have existed. And uh, we have Endemol as a partner internationally and Sci-Fi Universal channels are partners with them. So there's like five and Space Channel in Canada. So there's five or six people now that are involved in the financing of Dark Matter and me for <laughs> the missing amount of money. But what's good about the show right now, and I got to be careful how I say this, uh, they have a lot of faith in the team I have and the production group and the writers I have, and they give us a lot of freedom, which makes a big difference. Your show really is different. I mean, I watched the first season, and at the very end, I was shocked. I was like, wait, what? And then you got the, oh, it, what was the episode that made you just sort of encapsulate the series for people when they watch it, and they're like, oh, yeah, that that's dark matter. Oh, I actually think the first episode, I mean, really what happened is the way I pitched the show originally, and it was a bit of a hard sell because they were worried about a spaceship and this effects and the cost of doing really good sci-fi shows and I told them that they didn't have to worry about the spaceship and the science fiction elements of the show because it was really about six very complex characters and I said imagine if you don't know if you're good or bad I mean just think about it for a second are you a good person or are you a bad person do you know uh, what if you think you're good but you're bad and I got that idea uh, when I was doing my series 13 earlier on because I realized that all the traitors and all the bad people and all the people trying to overthrow governments you know they all think they're right that's true so bad guys think they're good guys so that it was an interesting concept good. Mm -hmm. ah, good. sure everybody thinks they're good yeah how we perceive them right but even the bad guys they justify what they're doing yeah and in fact, that became a part of the show. You see in season two that even the bad guys are saying, we got to do what we got to do. You know, They have had quite a bit of an arc. And one thing I would like to get to know a little bit more about their families, because we saw a little bit about them, but I want to explore more because I know there's six people. And it's really hard to go in depth in the course of a season on each person. Are you going to be focusing on any two or three characters this coming season? Um, there's a big arc in season three or season two we're talking about? Two. Okay. In season, well, no. Season two, we jump on everybody. If you'll, you'll see that Four's character, I think you see right away that he has a conflict because you haven't seen him burst out in season one you've seen him being very reserved uh you've seen that sort of inner power he has but you haven't seen what he could be uh so you're going to see a conflict with him as to whether or not he should be the emperor or he should be part of the crew everybody else i mean you saw that conflict with six last year am i you know the authority or am i a rebel right and he chose at the end of season one to be the authority to be the gsa to be the bad the good what he thought was the good guys he realizes right away in season two that the good guys aren't the good guys necessarily and he probably is better off as one of the team and he's finding himself that way in season two we're going to do the same thing with season uh with other characters you'll see later on that um three's character has uh, a hint of what he was before he lost his memory and he's attracted to that but is that who he really is now is that who he wants to be you saw in episode three uh that ne getting their memories back made them different people and they had to come to grips with whether they want that or not they're really going to deal with that in season two then in season three which we're planning right now we're going to really play with if you went back to who you were is that a mistake and that's sort of my hint about season three, which is going to be quite cool. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the season, which started last week, or is it starting this week? It's uh, season two started July 1st. July We've 1st. done three episodes now, so. I've been so focused on Comic Con, I haven't been watching right. TV. Oh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no,
streaming as well as you can make a subscription on any number of services yeah and you're lucky if you haven't watched the show yet you can catch up season one on netflix because we have the unusual support of netflix who got to show all of season one before season two started Ooh. that's a little rare advantage that we got now one final question yeah i know you said that you're working on a couple of cop shows yeah and that you you don't really say what networks they might be on but i think it's on the preliminary stage what so like to the average person what is it exactly that you do sort of like sum it up because i know i have a very vague idea of what everybody does like i'll talk to uh, like the writer the producer and to me you guys are all the same thing yeah actually i know you're not okay i gotta be careful how i say this but i do sort of everything uh i pick the original creative Okay, and I work with the writers. Uh, in the case of Dark Matter, there was a comic book, but we made some very significant changes to the series. So I'll work on the original pitch. Like right now, the two projects that I'm high on right now are with ones with feature writers who have never done television. And I've given them advice on how to turn their feature writing into television writing because it's a very different business. Mm -hmm. The other one I'm developing is a very experienced television writer. And uh, he wanted more freedom and more independence. And we got together and we started developing together. I have some other things. I have a bunch of crazy ideas that I'm also developing. I have a kid's show with two 12-year-old twins uh, I, that I'm developing. I have a show about a psychiatrist who's a bit screwed up himself uh, that I'm developing with a really cool writer. and. Uh, uh, Eli Roth's father, who's a top psychiatrist. I love Eli Roth. Yeah, so that's really quite an interesting thing I'm developing. So I have a really wide range. I don't like to be branded. I've done a lot of genre shows in the last few years because they're fun, and I'm all about having fun right now. Uh, the cop shows are with writers I really respect and I'm interested in, but I start early on with development. Then putting the financing together because I had a background in that. I was an accountant originally. That's something I can also do. And I like to say that I can do the creative and I can do the business. So Dark Matter, for example, it took two years to put the show together because there are five or six players in that show. It took a long time. I think the average producer would have just gone to a studio. But I like the freedom I get from putting it together myself. So I start with the development. I put the show together. And then once it's done, I get involved in all the key decisions. Uh, Every single script I see before the cast sees it, before the production sees it, and I give notes. My notes, as uh, even Joe has commented on his blog, are very character-driven notes. Uh, and then when the script's done and we shoot it, I'm involved in my favorite part, which is editing. <laughs> I get a big kick out of that. Sitting in a little dark room with the screen and an editor and saying, I don't like that performance, cut it out. That's sort of cool. Or I like that performance, let's get a close-up here. You know. Uh, that's my most fun part editing. I think I've really enjoyed that more than anything else. I've actually changed story points in an edit by using takes that the actors didn't even know we were rolling, where they relaxed for a minute and I saw something that wasn't in the performance. So that's the fun part for me. Oh my gosh, that's really cool. One last question though. Since Dark Matter was a comic book, did you have to get the rights from the comic yeah. book artist? Yeah, I mean, I was a bit... Uh, I it was a bit sneaky maybe I showed it to the network before I got the rights <laughs> but uh, and they loved it but then I got the rights and once I got the rights uh, I called Joe and Paul uh, and I said I want them to write the series and they were oh my gosh they were over the moon over this because they that had been their dream to do, turn this into a series Oh, so they'd been reading the comic book. Does they wrote the comic book. Oh, Joe and Paul wrote the comic book. Yeah, Joe and Paul wrote the comic book, and they had in mind five years of a series, but they'd only been able to do the comic book so far. So when oh, I put the God. series together, they were, like, in heaven. Oh, wow. Well, then I guess I'll have to take a look at the comic book as well as rejoin the cast of Dark Matters on Sci-Fi Channel. Thank you so much for talking with me. It's always a pleasure to see you. All right. Thanks. It's fun.